Now, we're here for the Untitled Pro Wrestling Podcast on the Time for Wrestling channel on YouTube. And we've just got through watching the Royal Rumble match for 2020. This show featured two Royal Rumble matches, one for the females and one for the male. The winners of their matches can choose what belt they want to go after at WrestleMania. There were other matches that took place on the show as well. And we're about to start this talking about what we think about what has happened overall I think that I am kind of bittersweet about everything that happened because let's just get into it so I, I'll, I'll explain it as it happens okay so we started off the show with a Falls Count Anywhere match between King Corbin who's beat Roman Reigns twice in a row which typically doesn't happen going against Roman Reigns this feud is based off of King Corbin thinking that Roman Reigns needs to be a person that intakes dog food because he's the big dog. He thinks he needs to have dog food all over his body. He thinks he's supposed to ingest dog food. He thinks that having dog food in his life is the way to be. In a very comical way. Now, my thoughts about the feud was it gives King Corbin a lot of heat in regards to people hating his guts. And it gives Roman Reigns the platform for people to clamor to what he is doing. This match was a pretty entertaining match that was highlighted by one specific thing in general. And that was the fact that King Corbin was put or placed inside of a porta potty. A porta potty that is at every construction site, that's at every fair, that is pretty much the nastiest thing you can be turned over in and he got turned over in the match and somehow I assume because he came back out later he got that urine off his body now the match went the way that I expected it to go and it was a satisfying conclusion to the rivalry that is Roman Reigns and King Corbin with Roman Reigns finally get his win after three tries in a row. What are your thoughts, Marcus? Well, that's interesting. It was good. Uh, I like the way my man Cormac was talking about, oh, he has to get his boys to see me. And the boys I'm speaking of is the Usos. Mm -hmm. Usos came in after he had his boys. Um, What's his name? Um, Dolph Ziggler. Mm -hmm. And I Bobby mean, Roode. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, um, it was really good. I liked the match. The one thing yeah. that I was thinking about in the match was I saw a guardrail be placed and hoisted up so that they could put one of the Usos through the guardrail. Apparently, they don't care about each other's lives anymore. They pulled... When we like to call in time for wrestling, they pulled a mo hero. You know, they was trying to pull a mo hero in all life in itself, just so that their king can get the win. So that was you know, that. You know, you know, when that happened, that was game over for the people. You didn't see him the rest of the night. You didn't see him because they were pretty much they sacrificed themselves in order to get that win. Kind of like how in Imperium, Volta's boys sacrifice themselves so that Volta can get them on the preceding show, Worlds Collide, NXT vs. NXT UK. So after this, this led into the first Royal Rumble match that was featuring the women. In this match, we've had a good bit of little surprises that I managed to understand as they came out one by one. We had... Bianca Belair, we had Molly Holly, Candice LeRae, M um, Mia Kim, Mia Yim, Mia Yim, Dakota Kai, Chelsea Green, Naomi, Beth Phoenix, Tony Storm, Kelly Kelly, Shotzi Blackheart, Tegan Knox, Santina Morella, which is a throwback to a WrestleMania time, Shayna Baszler, and 
from what I see, the breakout star of this whole match had to be Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair was on a chair trying to eliminate as much people as she can. I think, how many did she eliminate? She eliminated Nikki Cross. Well, Molly Holly first, Nikki Cross, Sonya Deville, Mandy Rose. She eliminated, was that Tamina, Dana Brooke, Alexa Bliss, and that's all of her eliminations. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven eliminations. She eliminated more than Charlotte did in the previous women's Royal Rumble from last year in which Becky Lynch won. Now, the, the thing that is leaving a bad taste in everybody's mouth is not just the fact that Bianca Belair got eliminated because she's a rookie so it makes sense. It was the fact that we had somewhat like a uh, a late night or late in the battle scrimmage where you had Shayna Baszler look like she wanted to eliminate every single female that breathed as soon as she entered that ring. This is typical because she seems like a female that likes to dominate other females in the wrestling ring. Because she's shown that over her previous NXT women's title reign. So when it came down to the last two, Charlotte Flair going against Shayna Baszler, I was trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Like, for Charlotte to be the person that won this Royal Rumble by eliminating Shayna Baszler just so that Charlotte could go to WrestleMania against somebody that we will talk about who won that match and uh, what, where, why? Why do we need a repeat of something that happened on a Raw before? Something that happened on a regular pay-per-view? It doesn't seem like it's building to a big match in particular in regards to the Raw brand when it comes to women's division. What are your thoughts on the Royal Rumble for the women? Well, Naomi. I love Naomi. Mm-hmm. I was shocked that Naomi is um, went to the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. I knew she wasn't going to win. Mm-hmm. Charlotte was, she did her thing. Mm-hmm. She's the queen. Mm-hmm. So, um, she had to do what she had to do, but like you say, we already saw this match mm-hmm. between Charlotte versus Bailey, Charlotte versus uh, Becky Lynch. Mm-hmm. Nobody wanted to see that. You can see on a wall or SmackDown. My assumption is the fact that the match is happening because Charlotte had a lot of losses to Becky Lynch and then she had a lot of losses to Bailey. You know, either one of those two, her going against, it'd be something. I was joking around saying that, what if Charlotte says she wants to challenge both of the champions and then we have another three-way dance with both titles all over again? Like, I don't really care for that match in regards to the women's division. I thought you're trying to make new stars in the women's division not keep having the same star because nothing against Charlotte Flair because Charlotte Flair has the skills you know no matter male or female she has the skills to get it done in the ring the problem is her dancing partners always revolve around the four horsewomen of professional wrestling in regards to NXT is either her Becky Lynch uh, what's that Bailey or Sasha Banks I thought Sasha Banks was going to be in his match. Sasha has not wrestled for quite a while now. And I, I don't know what that's about at all. Like, is she going to put herself as a person that is seconding Bailey in order for Bailey to look like a bigger star? Or is she going to do a thing where she, she has her mindset in regards to she's going to turn on Bailey at some point? Because Bailey changing really had to do with. Her trying to be different from every other four horsewomen, and now Sasha, who also changed herself, she changed before Bailey. So maybe they'll do something in regards to that storyline. Now, when it came to this match, this match was paced out pretty good because I didn't really think about the time. The time for this match was 54 17, 54 minutes, 17 minutes, almost an hour in regards to the women's Royal Rumble match. 
Now, if I compare it to the feeling of the last Women's Royal Rumble match, the second one, I don't think this really adds up. Like, uh, the, the surprises that really had me focus was Chelsea Green, her being there because she didn't wrestle on NXT yet. And she came in to eliminate Dakota Kai. And then she was proceeded and eliminated by Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss was in there from the beginning along with Bianca Belair. But Bianca Belair dominated pretty much the first half of this. This kind of parlays with the second Royal Rumble match. What we talk about probably in a longer length than this match in itself. But the other performances that I was surprised about in the match. Well, I shouldn't be surprised because... You know, Beth Phoenix is a female that can wrestle guys and beat guys that I would believe at any given moment, to be perfectly honest. She has the skills to actually do that. She doesn't have to wrestle on a regular basis to showcase that skill. She has the presence, she has the skill, and she's a Hall of Famer. She's good on commentary for NXT, and she does her job no matter what it is, correctly. I don't know, I noticed that her hair was bleeding in the back. Head, she was blinking her head and it was trickling down her head. I, I don't know what happened. You just saw that red spot out of nowhere. Maybe somebody called her elbow out of nowhere and it just busted her open. Regardless, she was a fighter in that match. She was not playing. She, lost them, man. she, still she, she never lost it. She, I, don't, I don't think she retired based on the fact that she couldn't wrestle anymore. She just retired based on the fact she wanted a family. I think that's pretty much all it is. And like I said, yeah, no. she did she did her she did her best in this match in regards to making you believe like at any given time that they give her a chance, she could be a female that could have made an event WrestleMania. So besides that, like the thing what what shocked me? Oh, the Santina Morella situation shocked me because I always joked about our truth entering the Battle Royal or the Royal Rumble itself saying that he is entered in the women's royal rumble but then they said no truth you're not a you're not a female this is the female royal rumble and he's like oops my bad i thought he would pull that at some point because in the pre-show he was saying things in regards to he's in the royal rumble even though he declared that he wasn't in the royal rumble for the males is it's funny but regardless of that charlotte won charlotte won she gets to go against whoever she wants to they had an interview with her where she just said that she proven that she is you know the best and this is her division is this division her division she proved it before that is her division is it the fact that she don't think that you know the champion of her brand or the other brand either we the brand no matter how you look at it is better than her don't know we'll see as time goes on so we move on for that match the next match we had was for the Smackdown Women's Championship. It was barely defending against Lacey Evans. You give your thoughts before I give my thoughts on this one. Go ahead, Mark. Alright. With Bailey versus Lacey, mm-hmm. it was high. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the best match. Mm-hmm. It was the best that I did it should have been on SmackDown Live. That's it. Oh. It was a little pay per view quality match. And I love it. Mm-hmm. My, that's my number one girl. That's my girl. Mm-hmm. So, Bailey, she did what she had to do, and she just, she didn't even deal with a belly to belly. She just pinned her, right? She pinned yeah. her when she missed her her finishing move, I think. Yeah. She was going for <laughs> She was going for her finishing move, but not the not the woman's right. The finishing move where she does a almost like a a um, slingshot moonsault. She got her knees up. Uh, yeah, she got she got her knees up. There's a double jump sp- um, slingshot moonsault that she missed. She got her knees up, and then she just rolled her up the pinner. So yeah. Mm-hmm. My okay. guy, are you finished? Are you? Still? That was, yeah, that that's it, man. That's it. I mean, um, I would have loved for Penny. So, um, after Lacey mm-hmm. take the title and go over to Lacey's daughter and say, look what I have, not what your mama have, and just rub it in a little. Okay. That would have been, been awesome. My thoughts about the match is the fact that how do you have a babyface cry before the match happens on SmackDown? 
They get into a big brawl, and it leads to her losing virtually by fluke. To the point that it's almost like it was a one and done situation. If she did not get to pin her in this time, she's not going against her anytime soon. Like this is what this was like a one and done title shot. Lacey Evans, yeah. been, she was built up over time. Lacey Evans has been built up from a bad guy to a good guy, guy over time based on her credentials as being a part of the military. And when it came to this match, it seems as if this match was just a stopgap in the situation where the real robbery that Bailey's going to do is going to be going forward on SmackDown against whoever, I guess, whoever wins the next pay-per-view, which is the Elimination Chamber, I believe. And we'll know what her trajectory is in regards to going to WrestleMania defending the title. So, we're going to the next match. This next match was for the WWE Universal title. It was a strap match. And I'm just going to say how I feel about this. I felt very pissed. I felt very pissed because... Not the the lighting was not the lighting was up. They had the lights up for this one. I felt pissed because for some reason, regardless of what logic it made for Daniel Bryan to lose this match, I did not want Daniel Bryan to lose. I really didn't. And the reason why I didn't want him to lose is because simply put, Daniel Bryan is the superior wrestler. Daniel Bryan made his opponent looked like he was a million bucks and then he brutalized him. and in the end just like what happened to Seth Rollins the Fiend just popped up like he never did anything and this time instead of just hitting with a move he allowed Daniel Bryan to hit him with straps across the face and he didn't flinch that led to him hitting with a urinagi followed by what I perceive to be is a mandible claw just from a position where he can get a pin my problem with the match in general is the fact that nobody in that audience, from what I can see, neither did I wanted Dan Bryan to lose. Now, I know who's going to beat the Fiend. And I don't really want to say it out loud to over on this podcast, but it's pretty obvious to me who's going to beat him. And if that is the thing, I think the person that's going to beat him is going to pretty much ruined the gimmick of The Fiend. I think The Fiend may not be any more after this, after he finally loses. Now, I understand everybody likes the mass and the title and what The Fiend or Bray Wyatt, Funhouse Bray is all, all about. What I get from it is everybody he's been against is a better wrestler than him. He just manages to win because he survives their onslaught just to hit his move on them. There's at some point, this has to stop in regards to this character because I fear that Bray Wyatt will get injured like severely because Daniel Bryan wasn't holding back and my whole thought about the process about the whole thing I said I guarantee he's probably gonna put just put the strap around him and try to choke him but he didn't pull a John Cena but he pulled close to it. what are your thoughts Marcus? well um I want it Daniel Bryan to win also but I know that the guy that you're talking about is going to be Brett White with one move. I'm not gonna say this move it is, it's going to go in the end, just like you said. Because the senior like he's a no seller. He's a big big man to a little son and this guy to just stand there and take it. Mm-hmm. And Brian took this guy's hand. And start stamping this, this guy's face. And he got it up like nothing happened. He said, no pain or anything. It was me. I would have been holding my face. I would have been like, oh, my face or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, my friend, like, he ain't gonna get hurt. He ain't gonna get hurt. Really, really bad. And did you know this guy hit one of his eyes was by Chloe? Mm-hmm. If you know that, why don't you look at his mask? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I noticed it, it was kind of weird, and the funny thing about it is, like, whenever you see Daniel Bryan wrestle, Daniel Bryan is pretty much almost the most believable wrestler you can ever see. The only person that can top what he can do in the ring is probably Brock Lesnar. So, when I see 
Daniel Bryan get to the point where his character feels as if, man, no matter what I can do, this man is going to take me down. I'm kind of discontented because, to be perfectly honest, nobody cares about The Fiend as opposed to Daniel Bryan. They care about the character of The Fiend. They don't actually care about the wrestling ability. Because his wrestling ability is... How can I say this without being rude? His wrestling ability is like... Zack Ryder's wrestling ability. Oh, man. And I don't mean a shot against him, but Zack Ryder can do what he does. And it has seemed like the same thing. Like, anybody can be that type of wrestler that he is in regards to doing what he's doing. The joke is, can be that type of wrestler if he really wanted to be. Samoa Joe, that is. So it's it's pretty weird. He's always been a character wrestler ever since he's got this Bray Wyatt gimmick. I mean, he was the other gimmick before, but this one was the one that people clamored to. And it's never about his wrestling ability. Nobody ever talks about his wrestling ability. They just talk about his actual character. There's nothing wrong with having character wrestlers. But when you have character wrestlers to the point that he's going to end up injuring himself because of the character, then it's kind of a problem. Besides this, we have no clue what's going to happen to Daniel Bryan in regards to WrestleMania. Also, they made it very obvious by the way he walked out of that match that he was not going to be in a Royal Rumble match. Oh, yeah. It was very obvious. He can barely stand and there's no way he's going to be there. Or anybody else could be in a match that had a match previously, but it wasn't going to be him. Alright, so we move on to the next oh. match. It's the WWE Raw Women's Title Match. It was Becky Lynch defending her championship against Oscar. Becky Lynch has been on this long reign of beating every female in sight. It doesn't matter where your place on the card, she's beaten almost every female. Oshka was the one that she wanted to conquer because she never beat her. Now, I don't know if they're trying to make us forget or understand that. To be perfectly honest, no one was ready for Oshka in NXT. She come to the main roster and the, the person that was ready for Oshka happens to be Charlotte Flair happens to be Carmella multiple times and now it happens to be Becky Lynch so if I beat somebody twice it doesn't matter because they beat me once that means they won it means that the debt is paid that is pro wrestling logic that doesn't make any sense to me what are your thoughts on the match okay well I think it was good. It was better than Becky. Tell me it was better than uh, Dave's match. Mm-hmm. They had a, a lot of motion and they had, it looked like Oscar was going to beat Becky. And they did it. Mm-hmm. But when I left the head down and Becky kicked Oscar out, tell me that really just basically went back in her face. Mm-hmm. That was awesome, man. That's, that's how you did it. Yeah, she prevented her from doing a green miss so that she can lock in her disarmor and win. You think it's over? I don't think so. It is over. No, I, it is. I, I guarantee no, you, I guarantee you it's over. I can tell okay. by the head nod and the respect that Becky Lynch gave after the match. She's done with Oshka. Oshka is one half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions with Kyrie Sane. They have titles. Oshka has a title. Oshka has a YouTube channel where she cooks food when she's over in Osaka, Japan. I know because I've subscribed to the channel. Now, the feeling I get in regards to the match is they wanted to just get this out of the way so you can say that she's beaten just about everybody. Now, her beating just about everybody would have made sense if Shayna Baszler won the Royal Rumble. But no! No, 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 no. Shayna Baszler did not win the Royal Rumble. It was Charlotte Flair. So more than likely, Becky Lynch is going to defend her Raw Women's Championship against Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania. So instead of it being Ronda Rousey included, it's going to be those two against each other. I'm not saying these two cannot put on a great match. I'm not saying that these two don't know what they're doing in the ring. Because they both do. 
The problem with the matter is WrestleMania is supposed to feel like WrestleMania. WrestleMania is not supposed to feel like any other pay per view. WrestleMania is not supposed to feel like a Raw. It's supposed to be real like a regular SmackDown. It's supposed to feel like the best pro wrestling on the planet for that one night of the That match, to me, is a waste of time. <laughs> wow. Because there's no way that Becky is going to lose to Charlotte again. Oh, you're telling me that at WrestleMania, that's a bathroom break. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a bathroom break. <laughs> It'll probably be a good match. It'll probably be a good match. I'm not going to deny it. And I'm not, I have nothing bad to say about the match in regards to quality. It's in regards to storyline. What does Becky have to prove in beating Charlotte Flair? The only person that has something to prove is Charlotte Flair. She wants to prove that she can beat Becky and take back the division somehow. How? Like, Charlotte has never had a meaningful title reign. Anytime she had the belt, it didn't mean anything. Have you noticed that? She never does anything with the belt. I'd rather Becky Lynch just plow through her. Matter of fact, at WrestleMania, have her beat Charlotte Flair in two minutes. She didn't get her revenge on Nia Jax. She didn't really get any revenge on Shanna Baszler. There's a lot of things Becky can do. It's just that I didn't think that Charlotte Flair was going to be one of them. I need to be. I need to be Charlotte Flair because she wants it. I should have known that something was going to happen because if you notice how he framed it, where Charlotte was talking about the Royal Rumble and Becky appeared out of nowhere looking at her and then she walked off. That that was a dead giveaway about the fact that Charlotte versus Becky was going to happen at WrestleMania. That was a dead giveaway. Didn't pay attention to it because it was like, well, we already did that match before. Maybe they're doing that as a trick, a Jedi mind trick. No, no, no. This was planting the seeds to let you know, listen, WrestleMania, Charlotte, Becky, title match. More than likely, it's probably not going to be a regular title match. It'll probably be some kind of special stipulation. I don't know what the special stipulation is going to be. But let's get off that subject. Let's talk about the main event of this program that made me ecstatic and very, very happy. It was the male Royal Rumble match. Now, I was expecting certain surprises to happen. I did not expect to see MVP. I kind of expected to see Keith Lee. I was in shock when I saw Edge and Matt Riddle was pretty cool to see. But the thing that is baffling about this match is the fact that Brock Lesnar dominated almost everybody that went against him in his match. One by one. He plucked off Elias, Eric Rowan, Robert Roode, John Morrison, Rey Mysterio, Big E, Kofi Kingston, Cesaro, Sheldon Benjamin, Sensuke Nakamura, MVP, both Keith Lee and Braun Strowman at the same time. Before he was stopped, Viva Low Blow from Ricochet and a Claymore from Drew McIntyre. Now, Everybody knew one or two people were going to win this work. We knew. We thought, if this happened, that's going to happen. If this happened, that's going to happen. It's a secure lock that either Roman Reigns or Drew McIntyre was going to win. When Drew McIntyre eliminated Brock Lesnar, I was like, well, at least he set up his match for WrestleMania. Roman may just win it just because Drew already had his moment. But no, that was not to be. That was not to be at all. What we had, what we had, was the last four being Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns, Edge, and Randy Orton. From what I see, we already set up matches for WrestleMania just based on those four people being there. And they're not matches against each other. The only match that's going to be against each other would probably be Randy Orton versus... Edge, I could see that match happening at WrestleMania. But Roman Reigns has his mindset focus on B 
being man again. Drew McIntyre has his mindset focused on being the man for the very first time. Never getting a world title shot in WWE. He wanted it, he was clamoring for it, and he wanted it bad. He didn't care who he had to take out in order to get this done. And the person he had to take out was Roman Reigns. Your winner! And Royal Rumble bound to WrestleMania competitor happens to be Drew McIntyre. I remember Drew when he was feuding with Finley on SmackDown. A young boy, blonde hair, skinny and tall. I remember when Drew used to torment the good along Matt Hardy and Kofi Kingston at the same time. I also remember Drew McIntyre when he was a part of 3MB. I remember when Drew Ruff had been a part of Impact Wrestling Evolve and going overseas to prove that he can bring back the love of professional wrestling in people's hearts. So when he came to NXT, became the NXT champion, I was like, well, this man is going to do things. Next thing you know, Drew McIntyre gets injured. He comes to the main roster and he starts tagging up with Dolph Ziggler. I like Dolph Ziggler just like I like anybody else, but Dolph Ziggler is not on a level that Drew McIntyre can be on. Drew has had start and stop pushes throughout WWE, but never did he get his singles world title shot. He secured it two times over within one match. Everybody wanted him to be champion ever since he came back on the main roster. And now he's plotting his course to WrestleMania Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> you know, I, I, I joke about that, but like that's pretty much what it looks like. It's like the pirate theme on WrestleMania. He is plotting his course to WrestleMania to go against what I'm, I believe so, because he, he eliminated him earlier. He's going against Brock Lesnar. Now, that is a match that I know that Drew will not back out of. He is straightforward trying to make sure people know that he is the new face of WWE and the new face of Raw. Now, the other caveat that was in the match is the heel that is Seth Rollins is perfect. Everybody clambered together to beat his behind before he got eliminated. That's what a good bad guy is supposed to do. You're supposed to use everybody in your team to help you not be eliminated. Your thoughts, Maurice? Scott? Alright. Um, no rumble match. I thought Randy Reigns was going to win because that's how it does what he thinks. I like it, but um, like a breath of fresh air because you have Drew in it. I never thought Drew was going to win, so mm. I love it. I love it. I love it a lot. Mm -hmm. And this year, Drew took out, no, well, that was last year, this year, he took out Walter. Mm -hmm. I don't think he did. Mm -hmm. Taylor, mm -hmm. he took him out with one clay horn. And he took out Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. The way that you beat Brock is you low blow him and you hit your finish in That's it. That's how you beat Brock. That's how it worked for for Roman Reigns. That's how it worked with Seth Rollins. Drew, that's <laughs> how it needs to work for you. You claim more him straight in the gonads. And you will be able to get your world title for the very first time. You remember when he came, when he first came in regards to being a bad guy, they called him the chosen one. Now he's going to be the blessed one because he's going to be blessed with going against somebody that is going to try to take everything he has to offer. He is going to try to put a hurt on him. No matter what he does, there's going to be suplexes, there's going to be kicks, there's going to be more suplexes, probably F5 or 2, probably Brock laughing, Drew not laughing, kipping up, and Clay more in him until Brock Lesnar can't stand anymore to get the three count. So WrestleMania is plotted. Every match is working toward having the best match possible as the main event. And I'm pretty sure Drew versus Brock Lesnar will be the main event of WrestleMania this year. So we have a lot of matches 
set up by this Royal Rumble. And we have our mindset on what WrestleMania is going to entail. The only thing we don't really know is who Bailey's opponent will be at WrestleMania if they're going to actually have both of the tag team titles defended, if they're going to have the women's title defended, if they're going to have an NXT match on there, if we're going to have matches that we wanted to happen take place. I know that this WrestleMania is going to be long because this Royal Rumble was long. This Royal Rumble, including pre-show, was what, like five hours all together. Mm -hmm. So, this this was a very dramatic ending. I was I was not surprised or overwhelmed with joy when Charlotte won, but that's okay. And Charlotte is a great wrestler. She has a lot of skills that not many females possess or wrestlers in general possess. Now, do I think that I'm happy about that match happening at WrestleMania, her versus Bailey or her versus Becky Lynch? Nope. Nope. I, I'll say like this, the way that I'll be interested in the match is if it's a steel cage match where you only win by pinfall submission. That's the only way. That is the only way I'd be satisfied with that match, if it's that type of match at WrestleMania. They pulled off a Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania, so they could pull that off. Now, we have a lot of shows planned for time for wrestling. It's, we have Time After Mania, it's going to drop soon. We're going to have Time for Wrestling TVs happening. And then we're going to get to the pay-per-view that it's time for recovery. There is a, there's a up upheaval of people seeing our shows either on Facebook through the private Facebook page and search for Time for Wrestling you should be able to find it and we are accept you and you can see exclusive things happening and I'm not going to get into an exclusive but exclusive things happen that, that happen kind of like on accident but it's, it's still for everybody to watch we'll have updates in regards to things that happen in Time for Wrestling broadcast is that need to happen but this podcast we will not put this podcast on the, on that channel it'll just be either old shows or a show that we feel that everybody needs to see besides seeing it on YouTube will be on there but on on Monday at 5 p.m. it's going to be time after mania and then we will proceed to work a somewhat normal schedule going forward in time for us but this has been our part three of an untitled pro wrestling podcast on the Time for Wrestling YouTube channel. Boris, do you have anything else you need to say? Yes, yeah, um, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Yes, Kobe Bryant passed away. He lost his, his um, 13 year old daughter by the name of she, Gigi, I believe. And they were on a helicopter. There's seven people that passed away. Rest in peace to that family and everybody that was affected. Because I know that there are a lot of big figures in sports and entertainment in itself that looked up to Kobe and looked up to people like that passing away. It was a tragic event that happened that was unforeseen. So we give our condolences. God bless everybody that that is affected by it and hope that we can cherish the memories as opposed to look upon the track. So, we are done for this part. The next podcast we have, we'll probably try to do it on time. Right, Maurice? The next one? Right. The next part we'll try to do it on time, so it'll be up uh, probably Friday night where we'll talk about things in pro wrestling, probably specifically, um, the main roster and AEW when we go to WWE. And some more time for wrestling stuff. Of some time for wrestling stuff we will talk about probably at the beginning. We're going to try to talk about on the podcast time for wrestling at the beginning or the end. It just depends on what's going down. But this was a big event that we needed to talk about. And this has been the podcast. We're signing off. Peace out. Goodbye. And this has been time for wrestling. <laughs> All right. Peace out.